Okay, everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, this is the uh, City of Northampton Urban Forestry Commission meeting, September 18th, 2024. Thank you. Um, for, uh, thank you all for attending. On my agenda. Okay. Uh, we uh, the meeting is now being recorded. Um, public comment. Do we have uh, we have Mary? I don't, Mary. I, how are you today? I, I, do you have a comment for the commission? Sorry. Uh, no, I am visiting from a Milwaukee Forest Group. Okay. And. What? I am a member of that, and so I'm so eager to listen and see what you're doing. I love that this is happening. <laughs> Thank you. Yep, you're 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 very welcome. Thank you for joining. And are you uh, lo local to Northampton? No, I live in Holyoke. Okay. Well, that's local enough. It's right down the road. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Welcome to Northampton. Just on Zoom, not in, not in, uh, not in, not in the city, but that's all good. Uh, Kent, how are we doing today? Yeah, hi, I'm good. Um, I just wanted to let you know, I sent you all forwarded an email that I thought would be interesting from Green Cambridge. They have a project called Canopy Crew, which is pretty amazing. They hire high schoolers as interns to plant trees. And I think maybe to find locations for trees too. And it's any any kind of backyard tree. It's not just setback trees because it's a um, it's a nonprofit that does it. It's not a government project, and I think it's grant funded. Um, and the other thing that was in the email, they're having some kind of a like webinar thing of people presenting about municipal tree planting project successes, which I thought might be interesting. So I just wanted to point that out in case it got lost in your emails. Yep. Th thank you. I, I saw it and it looks very interesting. Uh, another great way to sort of engage uh, the general public and also younger people. Um, and I think, that I, I'm not, I don't know if they still are, but they actually asked me to look for planting sites and there's enough public data available in Cambridge that I was able to identify mm -hmm. I think several thousand sites that were on um, owner occupied properties that had, I think we looked for a 10 foot circle free of impervious surface and free of existing canopy. And so then they got the grant and sent the canopy crew around, I think like door knocking and talking to those people and seeing if they wanted a, wanted a tree. So it's a pretty cool program. Wow, your GIS skills are so useful. Yeah, I've seen that email and I'm trying to figure out if there's some way I could do something like that for Northampton. Actually, Rich, I'd like to talk to you maybe separately about getting some contacts in the sure. Northampton GIS and engineering to see if maybe there's some non-public data that might help with doing something like that. Okay, I can surely... Uh, put you in touch. Let's just have a, let's just schedule a time and talk this convenient. Just shoot me an email. We'll try to figure okay, out something. I will. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Anything else? Okay. All right. I have a quick question. Who Absolutely. administers that project? You, it's um, the it's kids are paid, Cambridge. right? Pardon? The kids get paid. They do. It, Green Cambridge is a nonprofit. Ah. Uh, in Cambridge, they Steve Nutter is the um, executive director. I don't know really anything about their funding sources, but they do have enough money to hire an executive director. And I believe he went after grants specifically to fund this Canopy Crew program, although I don't know that for sure. Well, it, so it sounds, I think it sounds great. I also think what's uh, important too is uh, getting uh, helping it help builds a good skill set like in public communication and and just talking to people. Um, I think that is um, something that uh, is not uh, easily taught in school and is uh, maybe learned over many years of dealing with uh, the general public, et cetera. So I think that would be I think that would be great. So just reach out to me offline. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay, let me, okay, so we have the minutes that are in front of you that I sent yesterday. Um, I'm not sure if you had time to read them, but please take whatever time you need. If people haven't read them, just let, let us know when you're finished. Please. I'm done. Okay, thank you. I already read it, but I wasn't here, so it was a packed up stain. The only little thing under Chair Warden's report is um, the final bullet point. He will send commissioners a PFD, it should be send. That's all. I mean, it's a tiny little thing, but. Good catch, Sue. Thank you. I don't and, think I... Uh, I read it, but but I'm going to abstain because I wasn't there. Also, okay. Um, here a, a clarification under the uh, fall planning schedule. We took down approximately 50 trees this year, so there will be plenty of places to plant. Does that refer to 50 mature trees? That you would have reported, Rich, or is that uh, yeah. the fifty? Yes, not fifty young trees. No, no, it's fi it's fifty uh, mature or over mature trees that yes. to date nope. that we removed. Okay, great. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Um, Bonnie, one little thing I noticed is in, and I could we I could have said two, but I meant one, and one is the actual on the first bullet point on the second page. Public shade tree hearing for 64 Fern Street. It should be one pitch pine. I just don't want people to get confused because there's only a public shade tree hearing for one tree, not two. There are trees on their property that they own that will be removed that are not part of the public shade tree hearing process. And that's all that I had. A question about that. Is there also, there's a fence around one of the trees. Is that a tree that's going to be preserved? Yes, I'll, I'll address that uh, after, uh, during my chair, uh, tree warden report. Okay. Any other comments for, or suggested changes for Bonnie? Okay, yeah. but that's. I move that we accept the minutes as amended. There's a motion on the floor. We can get a second for that. A second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? And seeing none, Bonnie, could you do a roll call, please? Absolutely. Rich Thank Chris you. Liddy? Uh That would be yes. <laughs> Susan Lofthouse? Yes. Molly Hale? Yes. Jennifer Werner? Uh, abstain. Okay. David Lukens?
He said before he was going to abstain. Okay. Sorry, uh, I'm, I'm, I am going to abstain. Thank you. Okay, thank you, David. Uh, Richard Parrish? Yes. And no Jordan. Okay. That everyone? Motion, uh, the motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Um, to uh, Molly, to answer your question, yeah, yes, there, that is uh, that one tree is the last remaining public shade tree that's in that locale that's being protected, and it was just uh, it was just air spaded and root pruned at the end of last week. So they are they can now they the, the um, they backing up. We had the public shade tree hearing. Let's start with that. We had the public shade tree hearing on the 29th. Um, there were no objections. So um, the mitigation for the, the loss of that tree is $4,500. Uh, and also the other fee is for the re record, uh, the advertising fee at the Daily Hampshire Gazette. So the other um, issue is that the remaining public shade tree had to be protected, which you alluded to, which has the fencing around it. Uh, and they air spayed it and root pruned it um, at the applicant's expense. Uh, so they can remove the tree to the right, which is the public shade tree, and do the excavation for the driveway without damaging um, those roots. Uh, so that hopefully, um, we could you really use some rain? So um, we may end up having to go over there and do some watering for that tree um, with our 250-gallon water tank because there's no water at the site presently. But yeah, they, they, they did, um, they basically, everything went, us uh, smoothly for that hearing for for those applicants and we did receive the mitigation uh funds uh the other public shade tree hearing that we had uh which uh was back in uh august 5th was at 30 39 day avenue for a 19 inch nori maple i we i mentioned this at our last meeting um we the hearing proceeded uh because it was the day after our last meeting that we were together on the fourth and uh, there was one objection uh, since then, the objection has been resolved. Um, the mayor actually, after talking to the resident who objected, uh, talked, um, uh, approved of the the removal of the tree. And that mitigation is $4,200 for the removal of that tree. Um, so those money's going to our tree, uh, tree planting fund that we have um, so we can turn around and plant more trees. The one on Day Avenue, there might be some tree plantings that happen in the public right away. So the mitigation dollar amount may be a little smaller. Um, that's, I have to sort of work that out with the, um, uh, with the uh, uh, developer. So meaning that they would re use our replacement scale and then uh, there would be a dollar amount associated with the trees planted in the public right away on uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the street now. It's, it's eluding me. Oh my gosh. It's 39 day Avenue at the end of. Wow. That's pretty bad. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I can't that's remember. The name. Yeah. It's, it's on uh, not Woodbine. It's I'm going to, I want to say. Yeah. Woodbine. What's it called? Um, yeah. North, it's a dead, North it's, street? No, it's a dead end street off of, off of, <laughs> Off of it's, off of North Street, right? No, it's a dead end street oh. off of um, Bridge Street, and I'll remember it probably by the time the end of the meeting is happening. Oh, but I didn't write it on my notes. Uh, actually, wait a yeah. second. It's maybe it's in them. Anyways, they possibly um, said that they'd be willing to plant some public shade trees on this on that street if there's capacity, and then that would subtract from the dollar amount of the forty two hundred. Mm. So. Ha remains to be seen, but for now, I'm going to send them an the invoice for the the uh, mitigation that I just told you about. Question: Is yes. that the same project as the one that we all got the letter, that long letter email about? Uh, no, that was View Avenue. Oh, oh View Avenue. Yeah, okay, that's different. Yep. All right. And there's no public shade trees involved in that project. Mm. Just just private ones. Um, which actually sort of leads me right into my next update, which is the significant tree ordinance. Um, I, uh, I met with the mayor, Carolyn Mish on the 27th of August, and then we met again, September 10th, um, to, uh, go over the draft ordinance that we crafted well over like a year and a half ago. Um, and there are some small edits for, that are going to be coming to us 
uh, at the suggestion of the mayor and Carolyn. Um, and I'm once I have them um, in a word document, I'm going to send them to the commission, and we're going to hopefully discuss them at our next at our next meeting, which would be in two two weeks. Um, but uh, I mean, uh, overall, I could say that the STO, as it was written, was favorable. So, uh, but I'll, I'll discuss more when I have the the final uh, reworded uh, draft. Um, the other item is that I did do my homework, Sue, and you can tell Paul that I behaved. I'm going to do a little screen share. I think if I can do this correctly. Signs. Without, let's see. No, let's see. Share. Let me find out here. Hold on. Yeah. Share. Desktop one. Can everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, nice. So these are the signs that we had um done probably back in like 2018 hmm. and um originally we had uh underneath uh, the name uh, my name and the tree warden there was uh my the email address and an actual telephone number the email address was mis missing um a letter in it so it didn't work unfortunately so what we did is instead of getting rid of these signs and replacing them i had um marcus printing make up this sticker Mm. So these now will send you to the uh, setback planting mm. uh, form that we have. Same QR code that's in the setback planting initiative agreement form. And it sort of makes uh, life a little easier because that way there, everything goes to the form. And then I don't have emails that are coming to me that get lost in trans, uh, you know, just, lo well, just lost because there's so many of them. Um, I do my best, but it's hard. So at least there's one they go they go directly to there and then you know as as we put these out we can obviously fill in the blank here with like a sharpie or some other marker um, or even a piece of um, like painter's tape that we could just tear off and reuse the sign for some other location once we're done with it, mm -hmm. instead of just trying to recycle them mm -hmm. so and these are these are two sided so I just this is the one side I just put this on just to show you okay yeah. So make sure, Sue, make sure you tell Paul, please. I will definitely tell him. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You're, you're very welcome. Uh, one other uh, update. I I was, I was went to a um, a tree walk at this. Anyone been to the Silvio Conti Refuge in Hadley? Mm -hmm. I've never been there before. And I went there last Thursday for a, uh, a tree walk. Um with uh the the massachusetts the massachusetts municipal conservation uh i want to oh, say association of conservation commissions thank MACC. you yes thank you i couldn't i can i can never remember the acronym <laughs> they, I, even when i was there talking to them i was getting stumped so uh L leah gregorov who's the tree warden in long meadow which you've all met uh, I believe because she came to one of our Zoom meetings. Um, she is also the conservation agent for um, Long Meadow, and so she arranged a summer outing that sort of was postponed twice because of weather. So we all met up at the Silvio Conte Refuge. There was about twelve of us, and I walked around the refuge, sort of in amazement. Um, and I stopped like at every single tree, so we never even got around the whole trail before dark. Um, and we just talked about trees, and uh, it was just a nice, like, organic conversation about trees. For me, it was trying to understand exactly what their challenges are as conservation folks, because I, I don't wear a conservation hat in Northampton, um, and it was very interesting. Um, some of them are, are tree wardens as well, but most of them are like conservation officers strictly. Some of some uh, there was someone there from uh, an engineering firm who does like all their conservation work. Uh, so it was just an inter interesting dialogue, and it just reminded me how important it is for us to re to branch out from our little silo that we're in and remember that there are lots of people out there that are working um, as environmental stewards that we don't necessarily always think about when we're in the midst of doing what we're doing, which is, you know, sort of hyper tree focused urban, urban trees and arboriculture. So it was, it was nice. And I hope to uh, get to do something with them again. Um, and I do owe you that PowerPoint presentation so I don't think I sent it to you. So I, uh, they're from Cummington. Um, any questions for me? 
I have one question. Uh, Rich Parrish did, and Sue, did you go to the get together in um, Amherst? Yes. You, yes. How, how was that? Uh, yeah, it was you know, just a very pleasant gathering there. And we, we spoke to uh, Amherst Tree Warden and uh, another tree warden from South Hadley and and some of their volunteer folks there in Amher. So uh, it, it was a very nice gathering. They're a very warm bunch, very um, casual. They do, they do things very differently. They have once a month Saturday plantings and it's always led by the tree warden. So it's it's a really different structure, but they have some wonderful volunteers who've been involved. Involved Henry Lapham, um, many of you may be familiar with, is continuing to look at um, the state um, legislation, is legislative issues. It was some while ago, but he, um, if people are interested, he's a good person to talk to if you had an interest in that. Um, so he's a good person to network with. And another thing he said, there were, there was money avail, a lot of money available and there'd be money available for like a prune, an arborist pruning supervisor that really caught my ear. So I don't know, Rich, how, you know, if that's a city perspective project or, or tree Northampton. But maybe uh, I could, we could talk to you about that sometime. Did uh, did Henry allude to where the funding was coming from? I don't recall. Okay. Um, would you want to know about that? Does that? Uh, uh, yeah, it would be interesting to me. I mean, there are a lot of um, there are a lot of the the IRA, the IRA grant funding source um, does allow for um, staff. What is that called? The IRA funding source, so it's the Inflation Reduction Act. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that we have, uh, I believe, uh, I think 10, 10 years worth of grant funding availability set aside. There is funding available. There, there is, there are funds through that, providing that the community qualifies. Um, because yeah, it, Tree Northampton Underbridge Parish. You know, we have this vital program, but um, you know, before we looked into. That of course want to work in tandem with you. Yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, I, I, there's a, there's there's a lot of money available for urban forestry, urban and community forestry right now, which is pretty amazing. So, I think uh, our challenge is having people involved who want to do administrative work like that, like research the funding, find out what's required, get budgetary information right the proposal um and that kind of thing i speak for myself i'm pretty wrapped up in like the tree tracker and things like that yep but throwing it out there that was something that um he was talking about i don't know if they're going to try to get any but he brought it up okay anything else rich you can think of no Oh, I meant Rich Parrish. No. Oh, oh, <laughs> I was no. talking to Amherst. It's always good to like get out there and talk to other groups. Right. And uh, no, no, I think you covered it. Thank you for thank you for attending. Um, I I too uh, I like um, meeting other commissioners and actually understanding how they how their how their um, prospective bodies function in relation to the municipal full-time staff or how they get things done. So it's very interesting because uh, every municipality does things just a little differently, um, but they all do things well that fits their particular framework. So, um, okay. So I don't have anything else unless someone has a question. Um, I left our agenda similar to, uh, the last agenda that we had, because I think we sort of, we have, I believe some unfinished, discussion about the setback planting initiative uh one of the things that i wanted to just tell you before we get into this is that i did have a conversation with the mayor and i had a conservation i had a conversation with counselor jared 
the uh, city council president about the setback planting initiative, and they were both uh, in favor of it. Um, Councilor Jarrett actually is interested in seeing the setback brochure because he'd like to put a link to it on his newsletter, which goes out, hmm. I think, monthly or maybe bi-monthly. Um, and is, any, is anybody here on Alex Jarrett's email? Yep, I am. Yep. Is that something you'd be able to forward? I'd like to sign uh, up for it. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. It's very informative. Um, hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, so they're very supportive. The mayor was, uh, you know, I explained to the mayor we're going to be doing it. We're going to start with a pilot program, but um, we may be doing door hangers. Um, so we're just going to make just going to make her aware of that and make uh, the ward counselor aware of it as well. Um, so they were very supportive of it. So with that said, I guess I sort of feel I mean, we have the brochure, we have the tree tracker. I mean, we have sorry, we have the tree tracker, which is separate from the setback. Um, the setback form that we have, but I just I think logistically. Um, I'm not sure where we stand other than with uh, Christina Peterson has been sort of spearheading the setback, talking to residents. So I don't know if Sue or Jen, you work uh, with Christina more closely, if you would be willing to sort of like share um, her and yours experience and how that's been going and where, 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 you know, where do we, where should we start with the pilot program? And have we completely decided what we're going to do with the pilot program? Please. Uh, I can start, Sue. Is that okay? Yep, yep, yep. That's good. Go ahead. I have a few thoughts. I can jump in at any time, you know, when you're. Okay. Go. Um. So Christina um, Peterson is the main person who is, this is a separate project to the initiative that uh, the initiative in my mind is uh, the sites that Molly and Kent and the other group of people went out and identified within the quarter mile ish of the center of the city. That's and I, I understand we have a list of those sites somewhere. Um, so Christina is the person who, as requests come in from the, from residents, um, she fields them. Like Sue and I kind of look at them and then we shoot an email and information to Christina. And then Christina contacts every single one of those residents and goes physically out to meet them and talk to them. And um, she'll give them a setback brochure. She'll look at the property. She'll explain the program. And then she kind of tries to, in quotes, sell them a tree or multiple trees. Um, once she does that, then she communicates back to Sue and I. And I have a system that I, I operate under. And Sue puts it on our main spreadsheet that we call the tree tracker. And then... Um, Right now, uh, Christina is trying to cite trees that we have available and unspoken for in our nursery, mm -hmm. kind of the way I've operated the last year or so is to try to um, empty the nursery rather than carry over a whole bunch of stock over the winter because it's, it's better to get them in the ground and it's more work to overwinter them. We can do that, but it's the less, the better. Um, so after that, they have to turn in this piece of paper that um, is a form that has to be filed with the city. It goes to Rich. So in that time period, Christina probably goes back and forth with most people. I would say an average of like three to four times, maybe more, depending on what's going on there. So um, once we get everything nailed down, she tells me, and then I put it in one of my groups and that we have certain groups of trees that are planted on Wednesdays and Saturdays. So it is um, quite a lot of um, 
touches, I would say. You know, it takes, and you really need uh, one or a couple people who are willing to um, contact the residents. Like we can't have, I don't think it'll work very well. Let me put it this way. If we, if we have three different people contacting a resident, you know, yeah. it's, you really need to have a small group of people who are, sh are sharing the responsibility. I also feel like for this initiative, um, I think Sue and I could do the back end work probably of getting it onto the tree tracker, assigning it, you know, um, you know, doing the administrative work to get it in the ground. I don't think realistically Christina could do all the, could do more residential contacts. So I personally feel like what needs to happen is a person needs to be, we need a volunteer to take charge of the, of the small project. It doesn't have to be big. We can do three streets or something like that to start out with. And then um, maybe have a couple people that could help talk to the resident. Like it doesn't have to be all on one person, but um, it's, it, we, yeah. So I can stop there. And I mean, I have a vision of how the steps could, I'm kind of a very linear thinker and a project person. So um, I'll stop there. I can tell you if you want to know my thoughts about how, how it could roll out, but. And in the end, it does fall on Jen to really think through carefully what is the best tree for the place. We, I mean, we keep in an, our inventory, which is declining quickly. It's good. Um, you know, some small, medium, and large trees. So we have a little bit of agility there. But the there's just so much knowledge Jen has as a specialist, as a professional. Um, I think that plays a key, I mean, it, it, there's, that's always, I don't want to say bottleneck, but like, it has to go through Jen mm -hmm. choosing the species. She has to go look, um, we've had Jordan do a few, mm -hmm. um, he also has that specialized mm -hmm. training and experience of knowing, you know, it's very rough for, for the novices like Christine and me. Well, I mean, Christine is not even a novice, but for urban tree, street tree sighting, you know, what tree will really work there in terms of light and all sorts of in, other environmental conditions. Um, so that's a key part of it, I think. I like, can't really move forward till Jen has time to, to really look at it. Mm -hmm. Jen and I put out a bunch of, um, we're using the brochures. We put out quite a few. Um, we did some canvassing through a neighborhood. Um, a grand that, that, that lists, but another neighborhood that doesn't have any trees. And the residents had asked us to come into their neighborhood, but then that resident was out of town with a sick relative. So we just went ahead and did the canvassing without her and put them, put them on the doors. Um, um, Bob Haxby has a big stack and he's canvassing um, as well. So if people wanted, you know, brochures, talk to Rich. But I agree <laughs> with Jen going forward. It's, it takes a lot of coordination. Like we keep up with the ones that are coming in through the tracker. Um, if we were to have a deluge, I, I just, just can't see how that would work without paid staff of some sort, even to, somehow to expand the professional eye on it. Yeah, I don't know how I'll, you feel about that. And, and I'll just, on the back end of that, um, so I just filed a couple of, I filed three uh, agreements uh, and it took, uh, it was a little, a little bit. It was complicated because the three agreements for were for Habitat for Humanity. So um, the agreement has to be 
I have to actually put the book and page mark the book and page in the margin on the left hand side. And then I have to scan it and I send all three to the registry of deeds and they tell me whether or not the book and page matches with their records. Hmm. Um, this particular case, it uh, only one match with the records because it was a master deed for one property that was subdivided that hadn't shown up yet. So it's like a little complicated. This is a little complex. It's like a worst case scenario. Um <laughs> But I had I had to do this before they they closed on the houses today. Mm. Uh, they 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 finished their project. They basically had the houses sold, but the closing was today, so their filing had to be yesterday. So that way, there the agreements now are at each one of those properties, which will have brand new book and page numbers because they will have a different deed. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, then once I get the okay from the registry of deeds, after I fixed everything up on the documents, then I have to hand deliver them because they have to have the originals. So you have to run over railroad street, um, which is fine. But I mean, so um, the, um, I, I, this, the setback initiative to me is like a, a really nice quilt that your great, great aunt are, would make, right? Because it's sort of like all sort of like, sewn together and it's all these little patches and in the end the the tree is the end right the tree's the finished product mm -hmm. but uh i definitely i definitely think as we decide to ramp this program up or even if even in the pilot phase and even just an example of i had an interaction with christina <clears throat> recently about a planting at i think it was 168 south main street and just citing it resident had some concerns so christina you know was emailed me and we played telephone tag. We got a hold of each other after I went and looked at it. So, I mean, it's sort of like, um, it's gotta be, every one of them has to be like massaged a little differently because mm -hmm. they're a different location. So it does take a lot of, uh, a personal touch, a lot of human touch, a lot of conversation. And so capacity is clearly limited as Jen alluded to and Sue. So the question is, is that, you know, how do we move forward trying to when this initiative really starts to ramp up or, e or again, even in the pilot phase, what, what are, you know, are there some, are, you know, I'm not asking a commissioner to do anything, but is there another commissioner that would be willing to, to help? Um, is there another, um, you know, I don't think tree Northampton can take any more of this on because they're already doing their fair share between all the tree siting, the the tree inventories, the tree planting, um, and all the legwork in the dig safes. I mean, I I I don't I don't know. I can help. Um, I just feel like I need a little um on the um on the site training, like follow some people around at first to just see how the conversations go and all the things you have to cover. <laughs> But I don't I don't know about like picking out which tree, which kind of tree. I think that's I think that I think that can be worked with, you know, what we really need is somebody is like, OK, here I'm administering this project. We're going to do this street, this street. Let's say we're going to do two streets. I, I don't mm -hmm. even know, but we're going to start with two streets. Here's the available places. I'm going to yeah. document that we put uh, brochures at those places, be the person that um, gets uh, some way, gets the uh, requests back. Well, and gets then, people to fill out the city form so they funnel down through our yeah. existing system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't want to have yeah. another system. <laughs> yeah. I can, right. I can help right. with that kind of stuff, you know, sort of administrative organizing data kind of stuff. I just, you know, need to get a little clearer about exactly what it is. Hmm. And I volunteered earlier um, okay. to, to, to shadow Christina and do some of the more sort of uh, interpersonal stuff, which might complement what Molly's offering to do. And I, I believe Ken, Ken volunteered also to do something similar, so. Didn't okay. also Jordan? Yeah. I think Jordan yeah. did too. You might be right, yeah. It'll be a matter of having Christina invite people when she's going out. Yeah, or be in sounds like is that touch right? with her. Yeah, and say we we want to start this little mini project. 
And can you show us how to, you know, show us what you do or show us how you do it? I think she kind of regularly cycles through. And then, um, you know, I'm after that happens or whatever, I'm happy to, you know, meet with anybody or go out with you a couple of times. Or she, she will often just say, oh, this is a site for small, medium, large tree. And I can certainly, you know, do a mini training or something about what I look for. You know, it's really about soil volume. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And probably, you know, the reality is these plantings at the earliest would be, if we're starting now or in a month or whatever, would be next spring or fall. You know, it kind of takes a little while to, you know. Get all yeah. the pieces together. Yeah, right. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, it, you think it, I should meet with Christina to find out. Did you say she's the one who's now doing the sort of organizing of like which streets go when and who's going to be knocking on doors and that kind no, of thing? reactive? No. We have a sheet they come in on. I watch the sheet, tell Jen about it. Um, when Jen, Jen and I have kind of regular meetings where we do things, and that's one of the things we do is we look at that, we see what requests come in, and then we together we email Christina and said, Hi, we have a request from a resident. Here's the contact information. Can you please get in touch with them? And then Christina um, does that. And then she emails us back and or texts either way and says, well, they, they can't tell if it's right, what the right of way is, or there's all these different things. It's a whole <laughs> bunch of different things. It can go in many directions. You know, they, they only want a small ornamental tree. Um, <laughs> right. But so you're talking about people who who are requesting setbacks. But what about the whole right. door knocking effort? So so what what I see there is like Christina has already has a job and it's related to this new project, but she would be separate kind of, you know, so my vision and. You can correct me if I'm like off on some place that doesn't make sense. Um, is that let's say there's a team of uh, David, Ken, and Molly. You guys have these lists, and you say, "All right, we're going to go out and and canvas three streets." And if you want a door knock, you can, or you can just leave brochures at the places, and um, hopefully the people you know, say yes, and then we, they'll start to funnel through um, our requests. And we'll know they're your trees because of the, the addresses, you know, because the so people say. Just, I'm thinking maybe you wouldn't really need training to go out with the brochure. You just say, I'm a volunteer canvassing for people interested in having a setback tree. Um. Is this something you'd want to learn more about? Here's the brochure. It's important to make a request at this website. <laughs> and then um, there would be further weeding down the down the line. Does that make sense as a scenario? So look, can I let me can I just clarify something, Sue, just for my own brain? So what you're saying about so Christina is just going to continue to marshal on with the setback sheet that we presently have and the requests that filter in sort of organically and then we'll have um an, you know D david kent molly uh or whoever w is going to be working separately to canvas the pilot area so the, qu the question that i would the question that i would have is that once they canvass the pilot area and then we have let's say 10 new requests out of that just for no, a, a round number what's the capacity going to be who who at that point would actually go and do the site would it be christina or would we because that th those things would go to the tree tracker sheet and the question is you know what happens that what happens after that just hypothetically just i think um, then we have to have you guys shadow start shadowing her and seeing what she does in a meeting so that you'd be able to do the do the meetings right okay and, and then sometimes oh sorry 
No, no, go ahead. Sometimes Christina is like, you know, I think this is a medium site. Can you help me? You know, and then either Jordan goes to look at it or I go to look at it or um, and then we figure it out. And then Christ, uh, in my so we could do that part. And then you folks would have to contact that resident back again. You with know, the and answer. with the answer like, oh, we feel like these are three options. We usually don't give people 20 options. We try to like give them a, you know, and we try like to sell. Or right, right. We try to sell the biggest trees possible. Right. Sometimes they don't want a big tree and then we'll, you know, or they only want native or whatever, you know, and we try to accommodate people, but we do try to get them. If it's a site that could take a big tree, we try to, Especially the where you would be working, which is, you know, in it in the heat island, you know. Okay. Because we do have a, a place for notes on our tree tracker that we put our initials next to, like if Christina, you know, she'll go back in there and update it. Contacted them six times. They haven't no one's gotten back to me. I'm not contacting them again. Or you know, waiting for the sheet or, you know, whatever. These are ready to go, you know. Or it changed their mind. Yeah. That a certain yeah. amount. They agreed, then they changed their mind. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Christina. She's very yeah. patient. Yeah. But I, yeah. I don't see any harm in having a little bit of a backlog. I mean, we don't want an enormous backlog, but right. I mean, we're pretty consistently telling people, you know, this is, if you're if we're if she's meeting with people now we're not saying you're gonna replant your tree this fall you know, we set the expectation that it's gonna be a little while mm -hmm. so that would give some time to you know shadow a few meetings and then you'd get the hang of it i mean it's not real the complicated stuff all falls back to jen she has an enormous amount of information in her head, even about like streets <laughs> and utilities and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> my, 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 she's, my, my under, she's my understudy when I, for when I retire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe if I was 20 years younger, that would work out good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She retired. Rich. Oh, so she's oh, volunteering. Sorry. Oh, sorry, you can volunteer when you retire. I forgot. Uh, that yeah, would be I'm... the better analogy. <laughs> uh, okay, so another qu another question, and I'm sorry, we're a little over we're a little over time, but I it's I think this is good because this is an important conversation. Could could you tell me the roughly like where you can't where you did uh the canvassing of the streets already? Do you happen to know off the top of your head where you walked around? Where you we mean, happen to be? Yeah, where you Give sort us of that called Jen. Where Grand we Ave. That was Grant. it. Grant that Ave. was it. Okay. All right. Yeah, so that Grant was Grand Ave and the one on the corner of uh, Grant and Bridge. Not past Grant. The you know the inside corner of. There's oh, a house, uh, a big house on the corner. Yes, uh, Elizabeth yeah. Street. I think is there. Okay. All right. That property would make a big difference. It's a. Yeah. It looks like a rental. Yep. Okay. Um, and I don't have the um, flow chart in front of me, but would it be worth sketching out a flow chart for this particular um, leg of our tree overall tree initiative and i don't know might might sort of be in the mix in there but it yeah, might is be it helpful. jess who who does the flow chart jen i i wrote it up like drew okay. it up and jess like put it into a digital format, format. yeah right. yeah she i'm sure she'd be willing to do that yeah it, it might be it might be helpful um for folks that are going to be onboarding to do this to sort of see a flow chart and how it how it operates. And then I, then I owe you a flow chart for the other half, which is the whole, like what happens when someone calls about a big tree, you know, and yeah. what, what do we do with it? So I think we should have all of this in one place. Mm -hmm. All of us decided to retire at the same time. 
we would have information <laughs> for the next person. So, yeah, yeah. Or decided yeah, yeah. to go on a cruise to Bali, Bali. Um, Definitely your end of it, Rich, because you jumped <laughs> yeah. in with that. And that's a lot. That's another whole like set of contingencies where yeah. you know, there's so many variations that can happen. Well, 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 there are. And just for example, like 168 South Main Street, I'll just go back to that. Even though I went over there and walked around, I knew that there was a survey that was recently done for main street in, in florence and it it showed that uh some of the property um at 168 actually is there's more public property than we thought so there's it's not necessarily any setback it's just siting in the public right-of-way at this point so that's sort of a thing that um where else were we were, Jen? We were somewhere else. We just discovered that too. You and I went for uh, a, a site walk somewhere and I can't remember where, but we had to move the, oh, we were on Overlook Drive. Oh, yes. Yeah, so we yes. were on, over, here's another example. We're on Overlook Drive, the right of way there is 60 feet wide. Um, we had planted there in the past with uh, Rob and others from Tree Northampton and I think a few other commissioners, probably, I don't know, four, three or four years ago. And stakes were set up and there was utilities in the way, but ended up being that the stakes were in the public right of way. So we no setback needed if we planted them there. So we moved them back a little bit. They're outside of they're they're still on the edge of the public right of way. So there'll be public shade trees not needed for setbacks. So there's all these little things that um sort of need to be, you know, all the I's dotted and the T's crossed. So I think a flow chart would be helpful. From talking to other places, it does seem like they have you know, a, a coordinator, a staff person for for a lot of what we're trying to do, mm -hmm. too. We got to keep that in mind. You know, we're doing what we can do. Yeah, no, no, we <laughs> are. I mean, resources I think, made available. Look, look you know, I, I sat at a, I sat at a mass tree wardens meeting a couple of weeks ago and uh, someone was at the meeting was talking about um, Northampton and you know, people wanting to come and work in Northampton or something of that nature and sort of got clicked in my head. It's like, you know, things in Northampton are, we're doing, we have a really, we have a wonderful program. We have a ton of support uh, from the general public, from um, the volunteers of Northampton all the way to the mayor's office, city councilors, president and past, right? Um, but it took like, I, I put my year, 35 years. Mm -hmm. Like this just didn't like this, wasn't like this when I started in 1989 mm -hmm. and many communities are actually having the same are in the same situation. So it just took a long time. It took a long time, a concerted effort where, um, the, where public, uh, you know, the, the public, uh, put its, put its faith in government and then government put its faith in the public to make this program sort of work together because mm -hmm. typically that's, uh, uh, age old history and we could probably have a whole PowerPoint presentation on that, but it's difficult with people, but it's just amazing. And we're lucky. And uh, I hear you Sue loud and clear about the staff person. Um, and um, I can't, I can't say that any, any of that will change anytime soon. So we sort of have to plug along with the way we're going. Yeah. So, I get it. Um, but yes. Okay. So, uh kent yeah so on this pilot program it seems that what's missing is the, the upfront administrative part of deciding okay we're gonna do this let's start here's the list of streets let's do these first keeping track and molly not to put words in your mouth but it sounded like you were willing to do that um and you know just to make the decision as a commission, I, I guess, to get started. That sounds easy enough. <laughs> Just picking out some streets. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Somebody can just, I mean, even if it means you just like close your eyes and point, I mean, whatever, I'm just being facetious, but obviously, yes, you know, just any, because that would be good to at least get this, ball rolling so like we could maybe have some of these hopefully ca capture some setbacks for the spring and mm -hmm. i don't necessarily i mean i think we all agree upon this wholeheartedly i don't think we need to take a vote on this i think we've talked about this long enough we have the support of the mayor uh and the council president and the dpw director and tree northampton 
Um, so um, if there are locations, I know, Kent, you talked about like the State Street area. That was one place. Oh, but I have a list. I can send okay. it to you, Molly. Yep. Um, and I did put together a map, which I think I sent to all of you, but I can send that out again as well. Um, yeah. And it, yeah, I've got, I think it was 71 addresses approximately right. with owners associated with most of them for if we want to follow up and actually more than 71 owners because some of them are condo buildings. Uh, Do you know which yeah. ones um, the owners own it, but there's other people living there renting it? Um, yeah, I have the owner addresses. Um, so if the owner address is different from the property address, then they don't live there. So in that case, should what should we do? Send them a um, mail them a, a door hanger or something? Uh, we 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 could if someone gave me the mailing address. You know, it's possible I can do. We can do mailings through our um, inner city mail. It goes out to eventually hits the U.S. Postal Service. I could okay. um, I could like for example, grab some city envelopes with you know the. A, city letterhead or whatever and address them with you know using that list just go down and find the ones that are landlords yep. and you know address envelopes that yep. we can then stuff the um door hangers in to mail them yep well, i could do that at least a little bit of a form letter letting them know what property we're talking about because a that's lot of true places might own multiple properties that's yeah. true Right. And also to talk about the importance, you know, why are we doing this? You know, mm -hmm. just, uh, yeah. I mean, or you volunteers. could go the other way, or you could go the other, you know, why are we doing this? That we're volunteers, we're concerned about the heat island effect. Your property has been noticed as a place that could make a real difference for pedestrians mm -hmm. or for bicyclists yeah. and to reduce the um, increase in heat in the downtown area. Oh, I wish um, I had written all of your words, Jen. That's perfect. Oh. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to write them down really fast. The meeting's being recorded. Oh, <laughs> right, right, right. All right. Well, so um, that's one um, suggestion I have, Rich. I'm sorry, this falls on you, Rich. Yeah. Three words, Rich. Yeah. Is on the city website the old brochure is up there, but we should swap in the new one. Yep. Thank you for reminding me. That way, we could refer people. Yep. Online, see the brochure, you know, digitally. Yep. They would have to have the paper thing. I'm thinking for these absentee landlords. And I love that wording, Jen. Like, it's been noticed that your property could make a big difference. Mm -hmm. I think that's saying, like, you know, people are noticing, people are paying attention. And, mm -hmm. you know, would, would, would someone be willing to do a draft form letter that we could, that, that I could uh, like proof and then put on letterhead? I can do it, but I'm really booked out through October. Um, I hesitate to add something in Okay. In, until the end of October, but. What do you mean? You're, you're not like Amazon, Molly? What? Yeah, you like, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to order, order it today and you're going to do, it's going to be at my door tomorrow. <laughs> Come on. In November, I can do that. November. I bet you're promising to retire, Molly. Oh, uh, yeah, but <laughs> I, I might be going to that. To Pennsylvania to knock on doors to register voters. Uh, that's oh, important. For a week, for a whole week. That's important. That's important. Yeah. Anyway, um, I, I mean, could. Yeah, yes, yes, that's fine. I, I don't. Yeah, yeah, like, okay. I, I think the low hanging fruit of the folks that actually are owner occupied. Maybe that's the way right. to do this going forward. And then we know the people that are not owner occupied and we can right, send right. letters later on and that we can maybe get, right. even if we get so, one tree through the winter. If Kent sends me that list and maybe you've already sent that out, I'm not sure. But if you send it to me or if it's in a Google folder or something, I can go through and you know pick out streets to start out on, which mm. I'm familiar with because I surveyed the streets in the first place. And then yeah. I would contact maybe assign them to who Jen and Sue and David. Is that how um, it works? Like I'll do some to actually do the canvassing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I can, me and Sue okay. can be included okay. just because we're pretty full up. Like, be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Yeah. Okay. So Kent. Yeah. We're full David, up. Yes. David. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We got that. David. And I think, I think uh, George said 
that he could do it. And um, I could send people, you know, the, the lists of addresses for them to cover. And I would just request just the first round. I would just limit it to, you know, don't don't do every single owner occupied. Like Kent said, he has seventy one addresses. If there's oh no, forty owner occupied, like I think that's too many. You know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah, they, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, just okay. start with a few, like ten yeah, or something. I, yeah, a couple yeah. streets or something. I just each. want to make sure we're on the same page. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah. So we should Thank put the you. door Thank hangers you, in all the houses because. Maybe a renter will see it and think it's a great idea and contact the landlord. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's okay. true. We could always do that. And then send them a letter in addition. Wouldn't yeah. hurt. Mm -hmm. We've done that before. Times. We've had renters move the thing along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So Kent, you're going to send me that um yeah. that list. Okay. Kent, would you just mind CCing me in that email just so I can uh -huh. see the list see the list as well, please? Yes. Sure. Yep. Thank you. Can I, can I clarify? Maybe this oh. is obvious, but are, are are these canvassing sites? Are these all within Heat Islands? They're all they're within, all within quarter the quarter mile, mile radius of, this, of downtown Northampton. So, yeah, so, yeah. pretty much. Right. Okay. Kent, were the seventy one addresses all Northampton, or were some of them the Florence and Leeds this ones? Is, this is just downtown Northampton. Was what we decided to focus on. Right okay. Here. Okay, so that would be like Stan Moulton, Stan Moulton's ward, and be ward two, ward one. Okay. Yeah, I just need to see the addresses so I just know uh, which counselors to uh, address, that's all, and in the mayor's office, just so they have a uh, heads up. Um, any other? This is a great start. Thank you. This I think this is going to, you know, Again, just like the transition when, um, you know, when Rob, when Rob uh, left, it's a big transition, right? It's just going to take a little time and uh, we'll, we'll have a system down in place that'll work. It's just going to take a little, just, you know, uh, trial by fire, I guess, just learn by the lessons we've had. So um, thank you, everyone. Anyone else have any other comments, questions? Okay, so we'll start off with the list, and then we will be in touch with each other. Um, fall planting schedule. Jen, do you want to just quickly just give an update? Yep. Please. Um, we uh, just started planting um, last Saturday. We had a planting just with Tree Northampton and Habitat for Humanity on Burt's Pit Road. Um, and that involved um, no city purchase trees. These were all from the mitigation um, from uh, the building lot. And they asked us to help with their our expertise. So we were, Tree Northampton is interested in um, community, you know, connecting with other community organizations. So um, we did that planting. We had some volunteers from, uh, from Habitat Humanity help us also when we planted uh, six, seven, wait, what? Six trees and some shrubs. Yeah, thank you. Six trees and some shrubs there. Uh, we just started uh, planting um, today. We put in three trees um, uh, in kind of the uh, downtown, close to downtown area. And uh, we have a planting scheduled for Saturday. So we've got um, quite a few sites. We're doing some um, replacements uh, of ash trees up in Village Hill and on Ridgeview Drive that we have some uh, stakes set out. We have to complete the dig safes and uh, choose trees. And we also just... Um, got a approval for a large planting of 18 trees at St. Mary's Cemetery along Bridge Road, along the sidewalk. So that that's a really um, incredible planting. I thank Rich for um, discussing with the uh, cemetery folks. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and uh, 
and we have a couple other larger plantings and a lot of you know here and there filling in or Christina has uh, residents. So we're uh, doing dig safes. We've got Tom Bassett's helping us process the dig safes and um, we're starting up. So we're making more work for Rich <laughs> to process our <laughs> What dig we safe. need is this Saturday, we need volunteers. Oh. We had a lot of, ne not negative, but people who were otherwise busy saturday it's morning busy do parade i That's know right. yeah um george um cohort is has a bike event thursday he said he'd ask um we've asked the wednesday leader paul to um see if wednesday people could come so i'll get on the phone need be and just call people up who haven't done it in a while and um rope in the people we need because we got to come out strong here. We can't be short volunteers. Yeah, you can, you can always let me know too if you need to push back the amount of trees based on the volunteer numbers. I don't want to do that. I know, I know. I know. I know. I'm, just, I'm just putting that uh, suggestion out there. That's all. Yeah, and we do have some leads though. Like George says, he has this great list of young, strong people mm -hmm. um, right. who've been getting involved throughout the city. And then um, the Northampton Key Club wants to be involved, mm -hmm. but the timing isn't just isn't just working out for this Saturday for a lot of people because of the other events. There's other stuff going on too. They're not on Saturday, but this weekend. I think it's a pretty busy one with the food bank ride and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. But anybody here want to come out Saturday morning? Can't do, can't do it. Sorry. <laughs> I know Kent can't. Okay. Well, I knew I had to bring it up. I'll ask my partner, who's another rich. I'll ask him if he oh. would like to do it. Maybe he would. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to throw gonna... a little wider net. I'm going to go through some old lists. Mm. Throw out a wider net than um, Vicky's um, been doing. I'll get him. I'm determined. <laughs> okay. And then... Uh, uh, I... Go ahead. Sorry, Dave. Well, I just I just had a thought. So the Northampton High School seems to be a promising place to look, but they haven't supplied a lot of uh, volunteers. And I wonder if maybe Jen and Jen or I could reach out to uh, the the bi biology teacher and just encourage him to whip oh. up whip what up would some you need, volunteers. David, to do to reach out. Uh, you know, maybe nothing more. I, what I will reach out. I'll copy Jen. Just okay. Dan Moylan, right? The biology professor. Yeah, Dan Moylan. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. um, yeah, nine a.m. Saturday morning, and we don't tell people the location until we get them signed up, so we know how many people. Okay. Um, because it's no fun if we have twenty people to plant seven trees. Mm -hmm. I think Do it's. Do you have any place. any access to Smith students? Not in the past year or so. We had the environmental club. Good idea, Molly. They might not be Young, otherwise able-bodied people. Yeah. Thank you. We a couple times we had students. Oh, maybe they were from. I had a pipeline yeah. in the environmental club, but they all graduated. We, mm. we had some students that from Smith College that were sort of frequent flyers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that woman rose from China, and yes. there were a bunch of them. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yep. So I'll look up Smith College Environmental Club. Also, I mean, we could put up a sign. I don't know if they have a bulletin board somewhere, like at the library or something like that. Mm -hmm. Asking for volunteers, maybe. Yep. If we can get a... Uh... Diane from the Northampton Neighbors said she'd help us do some recruiting, but um, she's busy <laughs> with the right. doozy do. Right, right. Okay. And I, uh, Jen forwarded me a list. Jen, I did get the list for the tree. I'm going to review it, and I'll be in touch with you. So okay. Um, yep. So we're going to be. Did you get that other one about? Uh, did you get that other one about uh, Maynard? 
Yes, uh, yes, we okay. will not deliver that extra tree. Thank yeah, you. So, well, Sue and I will just put the tree there that's right. in my driveway. Yeah. Okay, and then I will follow up too. I got an email from uh, one of the residents on Sovereign Way, so I'll share that with you as well about okay. the other trees that are going to be removed there, and they want tree replacements. They just were hadn't heard from me. I mean, it's that's a conversation I had with them originally. So okay. Um, I uh, and also as far as um. The removals on uh, part of the ice pond, pro, not ice pond, I'm sorry, Ridgeview requires, um, I think, Jen, what we counted like 10 removals, maybe? 10 or Yeah. So, mo all the ashes on on uh, Ridgeview, which is on top of uh, Route 66 going towards West Hampton, all the ashes are severely infected with emerald ash borer. Mm. So they have to be all removed. And we're going to do the removal similar to what we did, the process we did at ice pond. We removed the trees, ground the stumps came back in and planted right away um uh, the, at village hill we're going to end up having uh we have we need to do one removal immediately but the rest are going to be plantings that are interdispersed amongst the ashes that are there to try hopefully get at least another growing season out of get a growing season out of the new trees and another season of some coverage from the ash unless they really decline quickly because sometimes ash can decline like in the third year like very like mm -hmm. uh especially if it's a droughty year they they just decline like very quickly so mm. so those are some things that jen and i went around and looked at um the last couple of weeks since our last commission meeting really and the ones on ridgeview we may because there's no overhead wires there we may be able to uh populate that with trees we already have from the nursery that's kind of my one of my next projects is to go up there with the list of available trees that we have and see if we can you okay. know depopulate the nursery with those okay all right um any other questions comments thank you for the update thank you jen sue rich i mean thank you everyone i should say but i you know i appreciate it very much um couldn't couldn't run couldn't make this program work without all of the support that you have given us over the years. Um, next item of business is the JFK school planting update. And David, uh, I, I made you, uh, I, I did send out the uh, updated planting schematic that David's emailed me yesterday. You should have all have it in your emails, but I don't know, David, if you want to screen share that or do you feel the need to do that or, Whatever you'd like uh, to do. I think it would be helpful, but I have a message here. Host disabled participant screen oh, share. Hold on a second. That's my fault. Let me fix that. Make co-host. Okay. There you go. You should be good. So David's going to give us a little update on what he's been working on with Chris Chamberlain and Tony. And you, you, you all can see that? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, and really, I, I want to credit Chris Chamberlain who is an engineer at Berkshire Design Group for drawing up this map and spending, you know, I mean, he's been uh, so helpful with uh, with all these elementary school campuses. I mean, he's really mm. put in the time and he's he's drawn up the maps and this is his map too. But this this represents uh, uh, potential tree planting sites based on, um, uh, I think in July, I took a walk uh, with Rich um, Tony, the I don't know what his title is, but he's responsible for the maintenance of the grounds at the school, um, and Chris Chamberlain. And Tony basically approved all these sites, although he's not approved this exact layout. Um, but he said, talk to the new principal at JFK, uh, because she, only she's going to know how that island out front is used. So uh, I would say about three weeks ago, I walked the campus with the new principal, whose name is Ketty Lowry. And she said that it's really only used for um, fire drills. And uh, there, there's a fair that that could be uh, uh, located out back. So it's, it's not essential that it be in the island. And then, you know, the occasional class is in the island also. But she was happy to see it planted out. Yeah. And she didn't recommend that we strike a single... Uh, proposed tree from from the map so you know actually in on this well you can't see it but north of this school there's a line of trees 
uh, by the cemetery fence. I think you can you can scroll your screen so we can see it. Yeah, for some Oh, reason. oh, your map is cut off. Yeah, my map is cut off. I don't know why. Huh. But anyhow, I mean, and I know that there's a uh, a visitor interested in Miyawaki Forest, but that area by the cemetery could be an interesting place to experiment with a Miyawaki Forest. Because right now it's just a line of about 18 potential tree sites. So that's that's worth in stand. I need to walk the campus with Jen. That's uh, that's kind of the next action and think about species and, and viability. And then eventually, I guess, get uh, Tony's sign off, Rich's sign off, and then bring it to the superintendent and have her sign off. But there are like some, you know, it's really like 45 trees. If, if all, actually more like 50 trees, if you include the ones by the cemetery. Hmm. So I it's, could, um, I have a map that shows those trees too. If, if you, if you all want, if Rich makes me screen share, I could, um, I could show the map that has those as well. If that's helpful. Yeah, go, go ahead, Molly. Okay. Uh, I think you have to stop sharing, David. Yeah, here we go. Thanks. Thank you. Kent, hold on one second. I... Okay, let's see. Share. There. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah, yes. Yes. Can you get it? Yes. Thank you, Molly. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, that line of trees up above is right along the edge of the cemetery and along the edge of the woods. To the west of the cemetery. Yep, behind the third base dugout. The Yeah. third base dugout. There's a incline, a slight incline there, that uh, the trees could actually go up on the incline, mm. and it sort of uh, tapers out as you get towards mm -hmm. the end of Spring Grove Avenue. Um, you know what? You know what would be a great place for Milwaukee Forest would be that little area. Can you see my hand moving up there? I don't know if you can see it. Uh huh. Yes. That little inset right there, um, it's just this little, I don't know if they use that to access vehicles getting back here, but it seems like they don't really need to. But there's a little rectangle that's not used for anything. Do you know how big it is? Um, it's it's just before we go oh. too far, it's not a good place because oh. there's there is uh big utilities that run in there. Oh. So okay. We could but no, it's okay. I mean, we, we could probably pick another place somewhere, maybe on the campus, possibly, but I that there's a trunk line, there's a sanitary sewer, a drain line, and then there's Mm. a water main that runs in there. What about the spot down here? Yes, that, that that's a good potential spot too. That's apparently definitely... according to the principle, that area is not used either. For yeah. Anything, except for fire fire drills. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't block um, a view for traffic or anything like that. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of lawn there that's just basically mowed. Mm -hmm. Aren't aren't there existing trees there, or are they back farther? That this the yeah. line that's that you just talked about, not the one back by the fence, but yeah, that one. There yeah, there are, are existing trees. Are existing yes. trees. To, to the left of the green dots are actual existing trees. Are they Norway maples? Yes. I think so. Yeah. Which um, trees? What, which? which what, Kent? My Did question. You... I, oops, sorry, Kent. Go ahead. So I guess you'd be adding another low, row of trees um, where those five are. Behind the existing ones, the yes, existing? yeah, it would be. We were. Uh, I think uh, we talked when. Excuse me, I'm just going to speak for David and the group that went there. We talked about succession plantings uh -huh. because of the trees and their condition. So we thought if we were going to be planting other trees on the campus, it would be a good time to try to put some succession trees in there while we had all the uh, person power. Mm -hmm. and the uh, will from the school department. Mm -hmm. So 
I'm sorry, Jen, you had a, someone Rich, else. I just have a question about the long line of trees along the cemetery fence. Yeah. Yes. It, would it, is like, is, would it be possible to water from the other side of the fence? Do you know what I'm saying? Like if, if they needed uh, to be watered, I mean, I'm just thinking about getting water in there to plant, you know, is that. Yeah, you, there is, you, because there is um, that on the other side of the cemetery fence is section one and two, which is probably like six lots deep from the road. So it would be pretty hard to water from the cemetery side. You'd have to physically go into the, into the JFK grounds to do it. Mm. Um, and you could access that. There is a gate at the end where. Right. Grow right avenues, yes. That you could potentially drive in there as long as there's not anything planted there, which there can't be because all those utilities. So that is okay. possible. That was just a question for access. Yeah. For yeah. Maintenance. yeah. And I mean, I also said to David, we could possibly plant some trees on the other side of the cemetery fence as well to sort of mm -hmm. coincide with that. If we had to take out some of the trees on this long line, just to make some triangular type plantings or rectangular. Uh, Kent, you had your hand up. Sorry about that. Yeah, I actually met with a group of people who were interested in maybe doing a Milwaukee forest somewhere in Northampton. And Mary's part of that, and that's why she's here. And I had thought that possibly JFK School might be a possible location. Um, in my mind, it was the circle in the front. It sounds like that's not really a great spot. But that spot just to the right, just to the east of that, that Molly pointed out might work. And... I kind of, I guess, I just wanted to rate, bring it up, and see if there, if uh, you were receptive to that idea. I'm, I mean, I, I'm person personally, I'm receptive to it. It's just the grounds, and that would be sort of like some. I don't necessarily know if it's the mission of the commission to just to make the ask for the Milwaukee forest. But I mean, we definitely, I think and I'm just speaking for myself, but I would support it. Um, and then the other thing too, is like the maintenance concern of the Milwaukee forest um, until it becomes yeah. established, right? Who's going to be responsible for that. And, and if it's on school grounds, I know the um, school maintenance staff is operationally challenged. Like a lot of uh, maintenance staffs, these are today. So I think there would have to be some clear, just a clear conversation on that part. But I mean, yes, okay. there's there there is a lot of potential. I think in some of these larger um, utility turf areas, because that's really what they are utility turf areas that don't really serve any purpose that are just constantly mowed all season long for these types of things. So, okay, uh, yeah, great. Well, that's really as far as I wanted to take it at this point. It's just okay. see if it's an expression of interest. Yeah, and again, I, I don't want to speak for other commissioners, but that's just my that's my take on it. So if other commissioners have comments, please feel free to weigh in. Or or we could put this as an agenda item at some other point. I'll stop sharing. Molly, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. David, David, thank you for sort of keeping track of this and sort of keeping your foot on the gas. Um you're <laughs> you're you're the, the school planter guru now. We've got to make you a special hat or something. Mm -hmm. I tried for years and it, I don't know. It just must be your charm, my friend. You, you've, uh, so. Uh, it's always easier when there's a, a brand new principal who is uh, a mm. treat. <laughs> Seriously, which is the case here. So, yeah. Yeah. Really, you right. made a huge difference. Yeah. David, I can probably, I'll offline get in touch with you, but I can, I probably can't do anything till after the end of September. I have a, a, several i'm going away again and stuff like yeah. that so okay. um I, we can do it in october and i really really appreciate like you know this all this work it's amazing it's amazing you know these school plantings would not have would not have happened and wouldn't continue to happen without you it's really just really great true. yeah and it takes I, a lot of touches like you know <laughs> i know yeah. yeah so i really appreciate it Chris gives it that extra polish too with those beautiful. He, he does. He deserves rings. a ton of credit. Chris does. But you're yeah. pulling it together and leading, David, keeping everybody. Yeah. Involved. 
Yeah, I think it would be good too. And I know we have, this is not on the, we're on school plantings. It would be good to have a discussion in the future about the maintenance of these plantings after the fact. Um, and I think uh, Rich, uh, Rich Parrish and I have sort of touched base on this before. And I think we all have in some frame of mind talked about it, but I think we need to find a way to make the, these plantings, especially when they're on other other properties of other departments that are not owned or not maintained by DPW that we sort of try to find a way to sort of make sure they're maintained and they look good, um, sort of step it up a notch. But again, that's a conversation for another meeting. So, so yeah, David, anything else to add to that, David, to your, to, uh, well, just sideways to that. I noted that on Kent's heat Island, uh, email like smith voke is a heat island and it hmm. seems like smith voke has a forestry program um it, 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 maybe after jfk they would be mm -hmm. a good hmm. target for a sustained like campaign hmm. just just uh just putting that out there yeah be a nice way to sort of segue into a little bit of a part um working uh relate partnership or um hmm with the forestry with Jim on and, and the students. So, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, I think uh, what I've learned from that is that you sort of have to be present. You have to sort of engage uh, because they are so um, they're just trying to like get through the day, the curriculum, there's a lot going on. The forestry building was destroyed by fire, yeah. a lot of moving parts at Smith Volk. So, but I think that Jim would be receptive to it. So I think it's a great idea. Another, um, you know, looking into the future, as far as school plantings go, we can look at private schools, like, I don't know, the Montessori school, or I'm not sure what other ones there are, or preschools, maybe. In yeah, you, you can look at that both, you can look at it both ways, especially uh, if you have some of these other private schools that have environmental clubs that we don't necessarily have information about or tap into that might be interested in actually coming out and planting. Mm. Or like the planting we did at the synagogue that was sort of a, a whole community affair. Um, just, yeah. There's yeah. that Smith College School. I forget what it's called. Uh, Campus Hill School, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's so. common school. Oh wait, no, that's uh, not the common. School. Yeah, yeah, I think campus uh, school. I think it's called campus, uh, campus Hill. I think is what it's called. I, I believe mm -hmm. I could be wrong. Campus Hill School. Um, but yeah, any other comments, questions? Uh, any other business not anticipated by the chair? Okay. Uh, so let's just a quick recap. Kent, you're going to get Molly the list of the 71 locations and you're going to send along the link to the map that you have created. Uh, and then um, I'm just going to review them just, just to check them out. And then if I have any comments, I'll send them along. And then after that, I just want to make sure that we are sort of moving along slowly you, Molly and Kent and David are actually going to go out in the field and actually go to these addresses and canvas them at some point in the future. So if you if you have a date or time that you're going to do that, um, and maybe I can join you, that would be kind of cool. Um, and also, I need would need the information just so I can notify the different war, the uh, ward counselors and the mayor's office. So should I wait to hear back from you, Rich, before I do the assignments? Uh, yeah. I mean, when Ken sends the email and everything and I just look at what's there, I, I'll just send an email. Looks good. And please proceed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. Right. So I just want to see what's, I just want to see the look. I just need to put my eyes on it and send an email, um, to the mayor's office. So the mayor knows that we're going to be out walking around talking to people, um, just in case they have someone calls the mayor's office and says, you know, what is this? So, um, yeah. Okay. And then I have some things I have to send to all of you, which I will try to do later tonight or tomorrow. And when you do walk around, if you need vests, let Sue or I know, and we can get you some vests because it's it's probably a good idea. You know, it's, yep. I I wear my vest 
whenever I'm doing any kind of tree stuff because it just like is a buffer. I even it, wear it at the tree shed because I've had somebody come over and say, what are you doing? Uh-huh. Right. This is good because I'm going to wear a tree Northampton volu- a tree Northampton oh. volunteer vest and some last okay. tree warden and say he's not here today. I don't know <laughs> where he is. I don't even know who it is. That's what we so say. I, I, so Talk I will be tree warden. It'll be a yellow free day. It'd be great. <laughs> um, Sue, I just heard from my partner, Rich. I texted him and he said he can help out on Saturday. So who should he contact? Or Ray. Where, um, where should he it's, go? Um, Vicki, it's, I want to say it's volunteer oh. coordinator. Hold on. Oh, yeah. What's it called? Um, there's a name just for a that. Second. Volunteer yeah. at Tree Northampton. Dot org. No, that's not the address. I think it's just something like volunteer. If you just go to the Tree Northampton website, I think you can just yeah. click the button that says volunteer yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. Her email goes out under volunteer at tree northampton.org. Oh, interesting. Okay. That's how Alicia has it set up, I guess. Just mm-hmm. give him my info. That way we know. What is the name is Rich? Yeah. Thank of course. you so much, Molly. That is terrific. There we go. We're getting a little would, closer. Okay. I would help out, but I'm going to be not in town. Right. Oh, well, thanks for all the work you're doing. All right. Any other comments before we sign off? Seeing none, uh, could I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? I will make a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting. There's a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right. Um, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, everyone raise their hand if, in favor. Any against? I don't ever see anyone any against the journey of meeting. <laughs> okay. The eyes have it. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Bonnie. Pleasure.